All right, so the goal of this, uh, this video is to discuss the receiver operating characteristic or ROC curve and the associated area under the curve or AUC measure. Okay, so before we get into this, we, pro we, we need to discuss some other terminology. So we go back a slide to this slide um, and look at these measurements. So, or metrics. So generally whenever we're interested in like a binary classification or like a probabilistic prediction, and we have two categories, like a yes or no or a true or false, um, it's common to use this terminology as opposed to the terminology you generally see from multi-class classifications of so things like you know user's accuracy and producer's accuracy and kappa and stuff. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's look at this table first. So let's say we have a problem, and the one we're going to look at specifically um, in this example or in the example here in the video is uh, wetlands versus uplands. So you're trying to make a prediction of whether a site is a wetland or not a wetland, which would be an upland. All right, so um, in this table we have the predictions, here's the columns, and then the rows represent the correct um, classification. So a true positive in our case would be a wetland that was a wetland and it was called a wetland, so it was correct. Um, a true negative would be an upland that was called an upland, so that's also correct, but for the negative or false class. And then, so this diagonal represents the correct measures, and then this diagonal is the incorrect. So a, a false negative is something that sh was a wetland, but you called it an upland incorrectly. And in contrast, a false positive is something that you called a wetland, but actually was an upland or wasn't a wetland. Right? So those are your basically four options. Again, these are your types of error, and then these are the correct measurements. So from this matrix, we can calculate a wide variety of measures. So precision is the true positive divided by the true positive plus the false positive. So effectively, we're, whoops, sorry, we're looking at this column. So it's the true positive divided by the true positive plus the false positive. Right? And then the recall is across the row here, so it's the true positive divided by the true positive plus the false negative. Um, in order to combine those, we can basically kind of get a, like a harmonic mean or average, and that we call the F1 score or the dice coefficient. It's another name for it. Um, another term that you may hear is sensitivity. Sensitivity is, a, is basically the same thing as recall, so it has the same equation. And then specificity is looking kind of at the negative cases. So in this case, we're looking at the true negatives divided by the sum of the true negatives plus the false positives. So these are some metrics that you can get from this uh, from this metric from this matrix. Okay, so <clears throat> the ROC curve is effectively derived from that information. So here's an example of an ROC curve, and you can see the top axis here is sensitivity, and the bottom axis is, is specificity. So we run this back. Um, again, sensitivity is your recall. That's going to be your, your y-axis in this case. And the specificity um, is going to be your x-axis, right? So the true negative or the true negative plus false positive. Okay, and you can see that they're scaled from 1 to 0, and then from 0 to 1. If you wanted this scale from 0 to 1, you just do 1 minus the specificity there, and you see that sometimes. Okay, um, this is a graphical explanation of that. So these curves would represent probability distributions. This curve is for the, the true class, and this is for the false class. So in our example, this would be a curve for the wetlands, and then this would be a curve for the not wetlands or the uplands. And then to actually create a binary classification or to call each sample a wetland or not a wetland, we need to um, have a decision boundary. So we pick a probability threshold, and that's what this line represents. So it, say our probability threshold is 0.5. So if it's if it's predicted to have a probability of greater than a probability of being a wetland is greater than 0.5, we code it to wetland. So that's our classification. And if it's lower, we code it to not wetland. And at that division, that breaks our space in those four components. So for this curve, again, which represent the wetland cases, the ones that were in front of the curve are going to be wetland and predicted as wetland. So those are your true positives. 
The ones down here on the tail were wetland, but incorrectly predicted to be not wetland, so those are your false negatives. And then for the other curve, which is your not wetland, the back end here are your true negatives, so they were upland, and you called them upland. And then the blue area here, which falls underneath the red area there too, oops, um, is your false positives. So they were called wetlands when they were actually uplands. Okay, and then from that, we could go back and, and get all these metrics once we have our counts. So precision, recall, F1, sensitivity, specificity. But what the ROC curve allows us to do is actually calculate the sensitivity and specificity at a variety of thresholds. So effectively what we're doing is we're taking this threshold or decision boundary and removing it from basically probability of zero, where everything is classified as a, as a uh, wetland, up to one, where nothing is classified as a wetland, right? And then for that, we calculate the sensitivity, and for all those positions, as, as we move it along, we calculate the sensitivity and the specificity, and then we graph this curve um, through the points, and that is the ROC curve. So again, the key thing here is that it's not a threshold-based me measurement. You actually are calculating these measures at at the full range of a full range of thresholds to get kind of a distribution, which means it can be useful for helping you decide on like an optimal an optimal threshold. Okay, so this creates a, a curve or a graphic, but that's kind of hard to, you know, interpret. So we like to be able to get like a summary statistic or metric from it, and that is the AUC. Um, so we'll move on to this slide. So um, the area under the curve, or the AUC, is the area under the ROC curve. Okay, so here again we have specificity, sensitivity. Again, if you wanted to invert this, for, so it goes from 0 to 1 as opposed to 1 to 0, it would just be 1 minus specificity. So this dotted line represents like the slope of one. So this would give you a, a area of 0.5. So the whole thing is from zero to one and then zero to one. So one times one um, is one. So the whole thing has an area of one. So if you split it in half, then this area is 0.5 and this area is 0.5. So effectively, if you were on the line, that would be like a random model. Your model is really not doing anything better than just like randomly guessing, right? Um, and then once you plot your AUC curves, then you basically have this 0.5 plus the, air, the, the additional area that's under each of these curves. So the highest possibility would be 1 and then um, you know, theoretically down to 0, but generally around 0.5. So generally we interpret these as uh, similar to how you would interpret a grade scale um, in like college. So 0 0.9 to 1 would be like an A, 0.8 to 0.9 is a B, 0 0.7 to 0.8 is a C, 0 0.6 to 0.7 is a D, and then 0 0.5, 0 0.6 is an F. Um, note that one valuable use of this is to compare different models. So this result is specifically for comparing um, some different models that were used to predict slope failures. So we ha we produced a model using a bunch of variables. That's the red line. We produced another model using just terrain variables. That's the blue. And then a model with everything but the terrain variables, the just distance from roads and streams, and then soil and lithologic variables. So as you can see, it, this suggests that the best performing model used all the variables and that just using the terrain variables, the accuracy was actually pretty similar. So this, again, highlights the value of the terrain variables in this prediction, just that kind of relative comparison. Um, and just as a side note, um, ROC curves um, have been shown to be biased or maybe misleading if you have um, data imbalance, uh, which means that if you have a different number of um, you know, like the true and false cases, and it can be biased. So one alternative that is not impacted by that is the PR precision recall curve. So remember, pr precision and uh, go back here and sensitivity are effectively the same thing. So the y-axis is the same, but now instead of using um, the specificity down here, we're using the recall instead. And again, that's not a, that's not impacted by the imbalanced data as much. All right, so now we're going to actually look at some ROC results for um, the wetland versus upland classification problem. Okay, so we're working here in R, and um, you know the goal here isn't really to go through the code; it's just to look at the results. So don't worry if you don't really understand what's going on here. This is uh, 
part of a, a different course. It's just an example. Okay. Um, so first thing I need to do is call in libraries that I need to do my modeling and classification. Uh, next, I need to read in the data tables. So I'm going to predict on and validate with. So that read those in using this read.csv function. So this train object is has um, the first field column is the class. That's what we want to predict, wetland or not wetland. And then the rest of the columns are terrain characteristics. And I have a different set of non-overlapping data that we're going to use to test the model. You can see there. OK, so that's our data tables. We don't need to run that. OK, so here's actually making our uh, prediction. So we're using a random forest classifier here. Um, so um, basically, we're predicting the first column, which is the class or wetland versus not wetland, using columns 2 through 22. Those are our predictor variables or the terrain characteristics. And then we get some additional output. And we'll hit Run there. And that should run the model. OK, so now we've produced a model. Um, now to actually assess the model, we need to um, predict to our test data. So that's what this does. So this predict function, uh, we're using our model to predict to the test data. And instead of getting back the classification, we're going to get back the class probabilities. Um, so let's hit Run there. And this head uh, function, that just prints the first few results. So we have the first six results here. So you, um, you can see these are the predicted probabilities of being a wetland, and these are the predicted probabilities of, of not wetland or being an upland, right? So that's our probabilistic prediction. OK, and then um, to calculate an ROC curve from that, I'm using this ROC function. And that comes from this. Um, so we went up too far, this PROC library, um, which is used for creating these uh, rec uh, recall curves. Um, OK, so anyway, the, we have to feed it the correct classification, so wetland or upland, and then the probabilities for the class that we're considering to be the true class, in this case, the wetland class. And then this AUC function calculates the AUC for that curve, and then the plot plots the curve. OK, so if we go back to this, we can see we got a, a very high AUC of 0.99. And do you, there you can see the curve. So there's your specificity. There's 1 to 0. And sensitivity, 0 to 1. Um, another way to get like a better looking graph from this is to use this ggrock function. And this comes from the, uh, this is part of ggplot, which is a ggplot2, which is a graphing library. So um, this will give us the same result, but just prettier graph. So again, specificity, sensitivity. Again, one use of this is to be able to compare models. Um, so go down here to where we did that. So here I'm making a new model, but this time I'm only going to predict the wetland versus upland using topographic slope. So hit run there. And then this one, we're going to predict the wetland versus upland just using this CTMI, which is a measure of like topograph a topographic measure of like wetness. So um, again, we'll run that. You can see that one gave a 0.77. This gave a 0.93. So our, our model with a lot of variables did really well. The slope models did decent. Um, this model did pretty poor. You're looking at like well, like a C, right? Um, but it's definitely like somewhat predictive of, of wetland occurrence. Okay, and then we can plot those in the same space. And I actually think I switched these around. Um, I noticed that when I ran this earlier. So I'm going to switch those. Just slope and then just CTMI and run that. Okay, so here we see our comparisons. So this is our all variables model. Then the slope model, which wasn't as good, but was decent. And then our CTMI moisture index model, which did pretty poor compared to the other two. Okay, so that's an example of a, a 
ROC analysis for um, to a binary classification or predictive modeling, probabilistic predictive modeling problem. Um, note that there are multi multi class versions for ROC, but we're not um, looking at that here.